simplify IFRS 2 which is dealing with uh, share based payments. So whenever you receive certain goods or you receive certain services, you can receive it from the supplier or you can receive it from the employee and you decide to pay for these goods or the services in shared based payments mode. This is the accounting standard dealing with how to treat those transactions. So at what value should measure it, at what date you should record it, what should be the entries, what you should do, what you should not do. So this is the standard as a guiding principle for dealing with all such share based payment transactions. Okay. So when you receive the goods or services from a party, it party could be anybody, it could be a supplier, as I said, or it could be an employee. When you received such uh, benefits from somebody, you have options to pay him in three particular modes as per this standard. One, it could be a cash settled equity payments or it could be a equity settled payment. Yeah. Or it could be an option which you given to the supplier or the employee, the person who has passed on the benefits to you or this option remains with you to choose whether you want to make it a cash settled or equity settled tomorrow when the payment date comes in. Usually this is dealing with the conditions when there is a commitment to make a payment on a future date. Now this future date can also be dependent on certain vesting conditions in certain cases. There could, uh, there could be cases where there is no vesting conditions and then treatment will differ as per such terms and conditions which are lying for such payments. Okay. So if we talk about the cash settled transactions first, which are very simple in terms of you just commit your supplier or the employee in terms of uh, certain commitments where you say, okay, one year down the line, I'll make a payment of 100 equity shares or 1000 equity shares. Okay, so today these equity shares in the market value or at the fair value may be dollar ten. So you may have a rough calculation in your mind that okay, it is going to cost me ten thousand dollars. Okay, or you may say that I'll pay this to an employee when he completes three years of the service or two years of the service. In that case, this payment is going to arise only when the next person meets that underlying condition which you have put for making this payment. Okay. So for these kind of transactions, uh, when you come to the measurements, it always uh, relying on the fair value of goods or the services. If it can be reliably measured and it is available for at your disposal. In case of employees, this is very difficult to find out the fair value of the services which are linked to such ESOPs or such benefits. In that case, we always go for the second option, which is the fair value of shares or the benefits. Okay. So then we derive the fair value of the benefit and record that as our liability. Okay. I'll make you understand through a practical example as well. Uh, little later in this same video. Now let's understand the equity settled. Okay, so the cash settled is typically passing on the benefits in cash or any other assets, but not giving them shares of your company. Okay, the equity settled is predominantly dealing with you had put the similar vesting conditions, but you have told I am going to give you let's say these 1000 equity shares. So I'm not going to give you any benefits or appreciation rights or any other asset or cash. Rather, I'll give you share itself. Now you may still decide whether I'm going to make it 100% free or I'm going to get certain amount. So let's say that today the trading price is $10. If you meet the vesting conditions, I'm going to give you at $2. So then $8, the difference in today's trading price versus the offered price is your cost okay so this has to be counted in option number three where you give a choice okay so if the choice is with the entity with us it's always recommended to go with the equity settled mode assuming that it will be settled in equity unless you have already decided that we have to settle this down in cash 
if the option is on the other party so the next party can decide whether they want it in cash whether they want it in equity whether they can exercise or not exercise if that is also a condition then you have to evaluate it properly you have to record the liability as well as you have to make provisions for the capital yeah so now let's make it a uh, little simpler let's take a practical example where uh, today if i have issued a thousand shares esop to an employee okay the market price as we have taken in above example is dollar 10 per share and the vesting condition says it has to be given in two years okay at end of year number one okay and this has to be given free okay at end of year number one what will be the entry okay so in this case it's very simple that you are going to account for since there are two number of years you're going to account 50 percent for year one and 50 percent of year two so when year end one ends and you are doing your uh, accounting you have to record the liability which is due as per the vesting conditions at end of year one so then you'll record it as the compensation expenses debit for how much amount so if the total liability is ten thousand and only fifty percent is vested at end of year one you'll make a expense for five thousand in year one so the entry will be asset account debit asset or the expense whatever you have got debit dollar five thousand at end of year one to liabilities account credit if it's a cash settle okay if it's a cash settled transaction it will be liabilities account if it is a equity settled account then the entry will be equity account credit for this dollar five thousand so depending on nature of transaction the credit account will be chosen so this is the simple entry you make to recognize your obligation against the shared best payments at end of year one at end of year two, again, you will evaluate how much liability you have already booked, what is the vesting conditions, how much is met. If it was a vesting condition for a group of, let's say, 10 people, and let's say out of that 10 people, two people have already left, who are not anymore eligible for the ESOP next year. In that case, the liability will automatically stand reduced to 80% of the total uh, obligation. In that case, uh you have to only recognize the balancing amount which you are supposed to pay similarly if the share prices have fluctuated heavily if it has gone up it has gone down that all will make an impact if your fair value which is taken for recognizing this liability or equity impact is depending on the fair value of the shares underlying shares then that adjustment also you have to consider for recognizing your liability and end of the every year okay so so th this is the overall accounting concept similarly in terms of uh, in terms of the option one where, where the next party the supplier or the employee has an option to ask you to pay in cash the cash settle mode or they can ask you to pay in the equity settle mode the rest of the treatment will remain same but then you will understand that what exactly is the fair value of the instrument which you have given. So, so we'll take another example which will be helpful to understand it better. So let's say there was a group of 10 employees, okay, and they were given a share option of 1000 shares each, okay. And the share price on that date when it was, it was given was $1.10 per share. So on the date of commitment the liability looks like 1000 shares multiplied by 10 per share so ten thousand dollars for each employee and then there are 10 employees so it's a hundred thousand of overall liability but then comes the vesting conditions in the game okay so if the vesting condition says that this benefit will only be passed on this price will only be paid 
if you complete two years in the organization so let's say there's no condition for one year of vesting it's only at the end of two years you are going to receive this entire hundred shares lot but for that you have to stay in the organization for the entire two years in that case at end of year one at end of year one you have to evaluate if all these 10 employees to whom we have been given the options are there answer is let's say out of that one person has left so that person has lost the opportunity okay now you have nine employees there okay at end of year one for those nine employees let's say for this particular share option the fair value at end of year one this price we took the ten dollar price we took at the beginning when we were giving out the option at end of year one this ten dollar would have gone to a different level altogether okay in that case if it has gone to 12 you have to adjust for 12 if it has gone to 8 you have to adjust for 8 and since this is considered as fully free shares to be given okay or the value for those shares to be given it becomes very simple that you take the overall whole number here okay in, in other cases there might be a possibility that you have given the options to employees that i will give you this share on a discounted price okay so let's say the market price on the date was dollar 10 per share but you the employees will get the shares only at paying dollar five per share so only dollar five is a benefit in the second scenario if that is the case and this this becomes a fair value for the shares in that case okay if the share price itself came down to dollar four per share at end of year one do you need to recognize any liability who will exercise this option by paying dollar five they will get a share which was theoretically for ten dollar but today it's trading at dollar four so then this option is not at all realistic no one is going to exercise so no need to create any liabilities there but on the other side when the share price goes to let's say 15 okay the fair value of this instrument goes to 15 in that case everybody will come and exercise for this option okay since you are going to receive only dollar five from the employees remaining ten dollars liability you have to record in your books at end of year one okay if it becomes 20 15 dollars liability you have to record in your books for the nine employees who are still there and you can make a projection that end of year two when this option is actually going to get matured when the vesting period will be completed you can still assume that out of this nine only eight will be there so then you have to book the liability for only those eight employees not for nine or not for even ten but that has to be backed by your assumptions and analysis which you are going to do there okay so you keep recognizing the liability in the similar way like we did in the previous example you recognize the assets and the expenses whatever it is in debit you create a liability against what you are going to supposed to pay to those employees okay so let's say at end of year one in the example one when only one employee has left and you are not asking employees to pay anything your liability to be recorded will be a thousand shares multiplied by dollar 10 per share multiplied by nine employees so th this will be your liability ninety thousand dollars if this share price has changed to dollar 12 in that case this will go for hundred and eight thousand simple mathematics okay so this will be your liability to be recorded in your books in the second case again in place of share price here you just assume that this dollar five which employees have to pay is dollar zero so whatever is the share price let's say share price is dollar twelve and you are going to ask employees to pay dollar five in that case dollar seven has to be recorded as your liability so thousand shares multiplied by dollar seven as your liability and since we assumed in previous example that only eight employees will be there at end of year two so amount of liability to be shown in your books recorded in your books would be only this fifty six thousand dollar okay now so this this will be at end of year two okay for year one it's for nine employees for year two it is for 
eight employees and the amount in your balance sheet tomorrow those employees come to you to redeem their shares you have to make this payment through the same liability so sbp liability will be debited to cash yeah or to capital so if you have to settle in cash you pay in cash if you have to settle in capital you pay in capital 